Welcome back to RTN Tonight, Glass Pro's favorite mid-afternoon, late-night talk show. I'm Parker Benning. And I'm Caitlin Kowalski. As always, we've got a great show today, so let's get started with the news. An Arizona Dairy Queen fell victim to a mysterious and strange theft the other day. A 15-foot spoon which sat outside of the ice cream shop leaning against a wall was taken by two unknown assailants. And after reviewing the security camera footage, the franchise owner, Ramon Calra, said that they were so precise in removing the spoon, it looked like they had done it before. As for the motive, Arizona law enforcement suspects that someone may have offered the thieves a spoonful of ice cream, prompting them to steal the comically large spoon. For a story hitting a little closer to home, New York City just revealed its most hilarious 311 calls ever. Mayor Eric Adams said the 311 systems have received 525 million contacts by phone, text, and other means since inter interception in March 2. 2003. For those who don't know, 311 was implemented for non-emergency calls in 1996 and grew to become some of the nation's largest such service. Some of these questions and complaints were my personal favorites. I'd like to file a noise complaint against my refrigerator. Can you check if my boyfriend is still married? And the best of all, a goat is tied to the stairwell in my building. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever in a non-emergency situation, make sure to give 311 a call or any, for any and everything you need. I've actually got an update to my previous story because as of today, the giant spoon stolen from an Arizona Dairy Queen has been located thanks to Pokemon Go. Michael Foster was playing the mobile game when he came across the spoon sitting calmly behind a baseball field fence. And despite his initial confusion, his wife encouraged him to call the police, who confirmed that it was the one taken from the local Dairy Queen. That is, assuming that there isn't a serial spoon thief on the loose in Arizona, of course. The Supreme Court took on a lawsuit for yet another dog toy, yet this one was against a whiskey company. Jack Daniels sued the Bad Spaniel Silly Squeaker by, created by VIP Products that is strikingly similar to Jack Daniels bottles. The dissellers of the company over the toy claiming it violated federal landmark law. The only difference in the pictures to me is that the whiskey bottle just looks like dog urine in general. So maybe Jack Daniels should take a look at their own product. A volunteer group in Maine claims to have broken a very strange world record, the biggest ice carousel. That's right, folks. I'm talking about the largest circle of ice spinning in a lake. And this one came in at almost 1,800 feet in diameter, which is nearly six football fields across. As for how they got it to spin, they say it took 10 boat engines, farm equipment, and a couple other wheeled vehicles. I honestly don't even know what to say about this whole story because it's crazy, like absolutely crazy. Anyone looking to beat this record definitely needs to chill out because I think this competition will stay frozen for a long time. Custom officers of the Detroit Metropolitan Airport made an unusual and potentially dangerous discovery in a passenger's luggage. Six giant African snails. The snails, which were alive, were found in a suitcase of the traveler who arrived in the Detroit airport from West African country of Ghana. The critters are considered a prohibited organism in the U.S. because they can cause diseases in humans and can wreak havoc in the environment if released into the wild. According to a news release, a previous population of giant African snails found in Miami took 10 years and millions of dollars to be fully eradicated. Every time I do a story on U.S. customs, it's either a foreign animal or a weird object. So that being said, I guess if you're bored of your own job, you can work in U.S. customs and see a lot of weird shit. Well, folks, it seems like Jurassic Park may have lied to us after all, because a new study reveals that despite being depicted with monstrous, huge teeth, the Tyrannosaurus rex most likely had large, scaly lips that covered the teeth even when the mouth was open. So as it turns out, maybe the T-Rex didn't look so menacing after all. If Universal remade Jurassic Park with accurate dinosaurs, I think the movie would look totally different. Between feathered velociraptors and now T-Rexes with lips, they'd be looking mad goofy. I mean, yeah, I'd probably still get eaten, but just because I'd be standing there dying of laughter. Yet for another Florida story, a Floridian man was bitten on the leg by an unexpected visitor right at his front door. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission told CNN in an email that they received a call about the bite on March 4th. The 56-year-old man received a large bite by the alligator to his thigh, according to the commission. The suspected Daytona resident named Scott Hollingsworth was watching TV when he only heard a knock at the door. Quote, I jumped up and headed over and opened the door, stepped out trying to reach for the light and barely got out to the door and got my leg clamped on, and it started shaking really violently. But fortunately for Hollingsworth, he was taken to the hospital with a non-threatening injury. 
So for anyone looking to move to Florida or for any Florida resident, you never know, your next knock at the door could be a life-threatening visitor. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Parker is going to interview Rowan Television's own Holden Korea Fisher. Welcome back to RTN Tonight. Once again, I'm Parker Benick, and I'm joined by a very special guest here in the studio from the Rowan Television Network. Please welcome the president-elect of Rowan Television Network, Holden Korea Fisher. Holden, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Parker. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. Awesome. And my first question that I wanted to ask yeah. you is, like, tell us a little bit about your beginnings with the Rowan Television Network. Oh, great question. So, uh, I started with RTN when I was a freshman. Uh, I sent an email out in, in uh, that August to the, uh, to that at, at the time, the, the president of the club. And I'm like, hey, I'm interested in this. And I get the email back, and it's like, all right, cool, go to a meeting. That was all it pretty much was. You know, it wasn't like, okay, do these steps or do that. And so I was a little hesitant at Phyllis to really want to get involved. But I quickly realized that uh, with no matter your experience or social level, you could fit in with no problem. And so I started doing a lot of tech stuff at Hockey Shoot specifically. Um, and that got me into wanting to possibly run for tech manager. Yep. Uh, that happened. Yeah. That it happened a second year, and now here we are. It's my uh, junior year, and uh, I'm the president elect of the club. Awesome. So you were a you were the tech manager as a sophomore too, right? Mm -hmm. What was it like joining the eboard as a sophomore in the club? It was cool. I mean, I didn't really see it as a big problem. I, I had I guess a little bit of imposter syndrome syndrome, uh, not so much with my technical knowledge, but just being like, am I supposed to be like? doing this stuff right now like right. as a sophomore, being still kind of new to college, and I've, there were so many seniors on the board that year, so yeah. it was like a little intimidating, but I, I, got, I got into it pretty fast, and everyone was trustworthy with what everyone was, you know, with their positions and assignments for it, but um, yeah. it took a little bit, but it got much better as time went on. And clearly you've been doing a great job as equipment manager because currently you are the president-elect of the Rowan Television Network. So can you tell us a little bit about how that feels to be chosen by the club to be the president? Like, are you excited for next year? Yeah, I am extremely excited, and I'm also extremely, extremely humbled. Uh, it did not, this decision did not come strictly by me. Uh, obviously, I made the final decision if I wanted to run or not, you know, but yeah. it, it, it included a lot of peer support um, and a lot of help um, just the past couple of years, you know, I started out being a really kind of anti-social student and here I am uh, with some of the most amazing people and friends I've ever had and worked with and if it wasn't for them, it wouldn't help me have grown as I did, you know, and uh, I think I'm ready for this position. Uh, I have some ideas for the club I want to share and being on the board for the last two years have really prepared me to take that next step and, uh, you know, kind of run the show for a little bit. Awesome. And speaking of those ideas that you have for next year, um, are there any that you'd feel comfortable sharing, like specific ideas for the Rowan Television Network that you would want to implement moving forward? I know it's kind of a tough question right now because obviously you're not the president yet, mm -hmm. so you might have not like thought about it as much. But if there's anything you feel comfortable sharing that you would want to do, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that now if you would like. Yeah. Um, a couple of my ideas that I have uh, regarding studio shows to start, I would like for each uh, week for at least one show to be live. Um, even though there was no problem with shows being edited in post, it was something that we did when I was a uh, freshman, when I was on RTN News, which was really fun. And I think it's something we can do again. Uh, COVID has really affected a lot of, in terms of club performance, um, the output in terms of how much content we can get out on a X amount of, X amount of time, X amount of basis. Yeah. But, um, we have such an amazing group of people, and that's just going to continue to grow after COVID kind of knocked us down for a bit. And uh, we obviously have the technology and equipment available to make that possible. And I think going live, as well as having a strategy to get more um, student body involvement in the club with watching us, so getting some digital signage installed around campus just for RTN. I know that they're cutting cable uh, in the academic buildings. Uh, this year, and so getting us into a more of a web-friendly live presence would also be nice. So not only being on YouTube, but being on Channel 5 or IPTV Channel 5, whatever yeah. it may be. Um, we're all set to do that. We just have to look up a game plan and make it happen. Uh, in terms of live events, um, fiber optic is something I've been thinking of for a couple of years now. Uh, we are a fully copper operation at this point for our live events, uh, meaning that everything is either SDI or Ethernet. Um, but as we do more events that demand more equipment and more 
distance, especially from where you would need to have microphones or cameras. Um, there's only a, a set limit with SGI, 328 feet, or right. Ethernet, which is around the same. And so being able to have some fiber optic components would really help in getting that distance over easily 1,000 feet, um, which That'd would be, be awesome. really cool. And we even have some of that equipment already uh, in terms of NDI, which is a, a video and audio over IP solution with our TriCasters. Um, additionally, uh, at the uh, SGA budget meeting, <laughs> we talked about the possibility of getting a replay system, which would really improve our sports performance and really get us up there as one of the most dedicated and uh, complete organizations on campus to be able to cover a wide amount of sports and it would allow us to cover events outside of campus at other colleges that don't have anything near as much as that. Wow, that's awesome. This is my first time hearing about most of this on the air, and this, this sounds like, this sounds fantastic. Exclusive. Yeah, and the last question I wanted to ask you, I mean, you're obviously part of the Rowan Television Network, of course, mm -hmm. um, but we ask this to every guest, is there anything that you want to promote to conclude this interview at all? Oh, that is a good question. Um, that is a really good question promote as in just like music or like anything? Like, I mean, like most people are from different clubs, so they'll promote their club. I mean, you're from gotcha. RTN, so it's a little bit different. <laughs> but like anything yeah, at all, yeah, like yeah. Just, just to finish out the interview, is there anything you want to promote at all? Yeah, so uh, my brother has been asking me constantly to get him on some kind of TV program or something. He is a um, musician, um, and so his name on Spotify is Dashiell Gray, with an E, I believe, not an A. And he's in a couple of bands, one including Drastic Measures. So if you're into like kind of really garage quality sounding uh, like grunge music type of a thing, I think that's what he does, or more folk side, which is his solo work, check out Dashiell Gray on Apple Music and Spotify. Awesome. And then now he can finally stop talking about it to me. <laughs> I think that we can put that in the description of the video, actually. So thank you so much for those answers, Holden. And when we come back, Katie's going to put Holden through the ringer on our classic RTN Tonight game segment, No Cap. And you definitely won't want to miss it, so stick around. Hello and welcome back to RTN Tonight. As you know, I'm Caitlin Kowalski and I'm joined by our wonderful guest of the night, Holden Kriya Fisher. Holden is now here to join me in RTN Tonight's game of No Cap. To give you a recap of the game, a timer will start when I ask you the first question. From there, you will have to answer 20 opinionated questions as fast as possible. And if you can be a minute 10, as for last week's guest, we'll see what happens. All cool. right, and then whenever you're ready, I'll give you a countdown in three, two, one. Are you a dog guy or a cat bro? Dog. How many computers do you own? Six. Are you ready for Easter? Yeah. Favorite cable? SDI. Is water wet? Yeah. Do you think the sun comes out during the day because it's afraid of the night? No. Favorite genre of music? Rock. How much money would it take for you to shave your head? 25 million. How long would you survive a zombie apocalypse? 24 hours. Favorite shape? Squeal. Do you love fries or do you love fries? I love fries. What's your favorite hobby? Ham radio. Do you know how to spell super casualist extraordinary shit? <laughs> Supercalifragilisticexpialid, no. You got it. Favorite studio show? <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> How do you feel about mayonnaise on pickles? No. What's your take on sledding? Yeah. Favorite electrical energy source? Ooh, uh, solo. Do you think you can defeat Superman with enough preparation? With, with enough voltage, absolutely. Drip or die? Drip. On a scale of one to 10, how annoying is Emma Butts? <laughs> No, she's fine. <laughs> and with that, you came in with a time of one minute and 10 seconds. He beat oh. the time directly, <laughs> which means you will get RTN tonight's gift. It's one of a kind. Close your eyes. I feel like this goes with your technology and you could really use it. Yes! It's a pen! It can write stuff. Kind of, it doesn't. It, <laughs> that's a dumb pen. You know I picked that out special for you when I found out you were coming? Out of the box of 500? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, with that, I think it's time to close the show. Thank you so much, Holden, for coming. We won't see you again based off of you just throwing the pen. But we are so thankful for all our guests for tuning in to RTN tonight. I'm Caitlin Klowski. Have a great night, Glasgow.